Hello, welcome to Photo School. This is part two of the basic photography tutorial. Today, all about aperture. If you've seen the other parts, uh, part one especially about exposure, you know that with the aperture, you can set the amount of light that falls on the sensor. But I'm always, I'm also going to show you today what the aperture means for the depth of field and what it means for your photos. I hope you enjoy. Give it a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe to my channel it would help me to make better videos for you and if you comment down below i can help you or you can help me make better videos the aperture are blades inside the camera's lens that can open and close controlling the amount of light that hits the camera sensor aperture also affects depth of field Depth of field is the distance between the closest and farthest object in a photo that is still in focus. With a large aperture, a small number, a lot of light comes on the sensor, and you can photograph in dark conditions, or you can use a faster shutter speed. Because the large aperture lets a lot of light through. But at the large aperture, the background is not in focus. As the aperture gets smaller, the number increases, less light falls on the sensor, but gradually more and more of the background and also the foreground is in focus. Depth of field is the distance between the closest and farthest objects in a photo that are in focus. Your camera focuses on one plane, the transition between focus and blur is very gradual. A large aperture, a small number, here f1.8, results in a small sharp area and a small aperture, a large number, here f22, results in a large sharp area. There are, of course, no set rules for the use of the aperture, which apply in all circumstances. If you get more experienced, you will find out for yourself which apertures you can use, under which circumstances. Practicing a lot and looking closely at your photos will help you with that. You can see a rule of thumb for aperture use here. You use the very large apertures between 1.2 and 1.8 especially when there is very little light, such as inside the house or at night. But if you really want very shallow depth of field, it can also be useful. Focusing at a very shallow depth of field is not easy. Sometimes you need a tripod to avoid moving the camera unnecessarily. Apertures between 2.8 and 5.6 and sometimes up to 8.0, can be used very well for portraits. So that the face is sharp and the background is not sharp. Also in macro photography, photographing very small things such as insects and flowers, a shallow depth of field can be beautiful. For landscapes and panoramas, it is important that the photo is in focus from front to back, and you need small apertures, which are between it and an f12. If you need a very long exposure, such as with trails of light from cars at night, you may need to make the aperture very small. Remember, these are just as rules of thumb. By practicing and discovering and practice how it works, you will learn which effect you like yourself. In the photos of the dwarfs, the exposure was kept the same by changing shutter speed and ISO and the aperture became smaller and smaller, by going from 1.2 to 16. You can see that the background goes from very blurry to much sharper. In the example photos you can see how you use an aperture in practice, to keep the background blurred in portraits and macro photography, and sharp from front to back in landscape photography. So this was the end of the second part of the basic photography tutorial and it was all about aperture. I hope you've learned that with aperture you not only can regulate the amount of light falling on your sensor but you can also regulate the depth of field and that with depth of field you can achieve beautiful effects on your photography. A shallow depth of field for portrait with a blurry background or a very high depth of field for panoramas and landscapes where everything is sharp and in focus. So I hope you've learned something. A thumbs up, I would like that. If you would subscribe, I would like that also. And below in the comments, you can ask your questions or you can help me make better videos next time. So see you next time. Bye bye.